Over the years, I've had numerous requests to automate the AccuSlice system. I've had several concerns about doing that. First of all, being the cost, you know, how costly would it be to automate the system? Uh, the second issue is the system needs to be portable. Uh, a lot of your automated systems are permanently mounted to your system and it's, you know, they're just part of the system. But with the bandsaw, you need, need to be able to take it off uh, to change a blade, to clean your system. Uh, it just has to be portable to take it off and on. So that was a second concern. And then uh, I was concerning uh, what type of system I need to use to drive you know, my sled through the bandsaw blade. And there's actually three different systems I could have used. Uh, first of all, I could have used a belt driven system. I could have used a rack and pinion type system or a ball drive system. And I decided to use the ball drive system after talking to uh, several people and several of our customers. Uh, a ball drive system consists of a, a screw and the sled gets attached to that screw and, and drives to the uh, bandsaw blade. So I've uh, spent the last couple weeks designing and building a prototype of the system. Uh, this is the work in process. What I'll be showing you is the initial design uh, of the project. I've actually already built it three times over, remodeling it and rebuilding it and redoing parts so it fits the system. Uh, but it'll be mounting to the rail on the AccuSlide system and I'll be using the AccuSlide 2 carriage. Uh, I'll be using this AccuSlide 2 carriage because it's, it's more versatile, it's a longer carriage and uh, I'm going to put different attachments on it to you know, do different things from short boards to tall boards. So first of all, to get the system set up, let me take off the existing AccuSled system. Take off the sled. And take off the rail. So I'm designing the system that mounts to a rail. So in order to take the system off and on, you just take and remove the rail. Uh, so with the system, I'll be using a six foot rail. So this is the system I designed. It's a six foot rail. And attached to that, I have some plates on the bottom and top and I have this ball screw attached to those plates. So this just mounts in the holes in the where your rail normally goes on the system. So it's a little bit heavier than the normal AccuSlice system. Uh, but it is portable. It can be taken off and on the system. Let me get this screwed on here in a second and I'll describe how it works. Okay, so on the system now I have my six foot rail and on the bottom and the top of the rail I have these quarter inch by six inch plates mounted. And that plate comes out and that plate is the same thickness as my AccuSlice system so it's a perfect fit. And on that plate I've mounted a a piece here to put this tail end of my screw system and the opposite end I have another plate with another support and I'm using a stepper motor. Now the one thing I found out you do need for this system you need both the extension tables and also the extensions out here for the mag jig clamps. You need the extension tables to support this log rail. Uh, so that was the, these tables were described in a previous video and I'm glad I built them because I, I def definitely needed them for this system. So I designed this system and I designed it by putting the screw system outside the rail. And it means I had to move the mag jigs out a little bit. And I'm using my extensions on my table. And I'm also using the extensions on the end of the table here. So I need both extensions in order to operate this. Both the table extensions and the table extensions this way for the mag jig clamps. But it all fits. And this threaded bar system is where this plate rides on and this plate will get attached to my carriage and that will push the system through the bandsaw blade. I was hoping to use a smaller screw system that would actually go inside the channel in, on the rail. But it's just much too big to do that and even putting extensions on the, uh, the sled would be just too big. So I decided to move it out and in reality it's probably a better choice because I have to watch, you know, getting a lot of sawdust in this system. So by being further away, it actually is better. It can minimize the sawdust. Probably eventually I'll need to build a, a guard around this, you know, for, both for safety and also to uh, uh, keep the sawdust off this uh, screw system. And on the end I have a stepper motor and I'm using a NEMA 
23 stepper motor. This is a, it's got a NEMA 23, it's a four uh, amp motor, it's pretty strong, but I'm not even certain it's gonna be strong enough. I'll be doing some more work on this as time goes on. And on the system, I mount my sled. This is my AccuSled 2 carriage. And again, that was the other issue. This, uh, this carriage needs to come off and on frequently because you frequently have to clean the, your bearings on your sled. So by having this uh, bar out to the side, I can just remove it easily and take the sled off to clean the bearings. And then I mounted the plate on here and this screw system gets attached to this plate. And it's just a thumb screw to attach it. And now as this screw system migrates down the ball screw, the sled will move through the bandsaw blade. As I mentioned earlier, this is a prototype, so everything here is, is temporary. It's just a, a testing system to make sure the system works to get everything up and running. This is my NEMA 23 motor. It has a coupling that mounts to the ball screw. And this is the carriage, or the, uh, the plate that rides on the ball screw to push your carriage through the bandsaw blade. The system consists of a, a power supply. Again, this is a a bench top supply which will be replaced by a more portable system in the future. I'm using an Arduino Uno uh, microprocessor uh, and a stepper motor controller. And I did a quite a bit of programming many years ago but I'd never done any programming with this Arduino so the last two weeks I've been relearning how to do some programming and developed a, a system to operate the system. So this is temporary and on my board here, I actually have five switches. Three of these switches are for the controlling, uh, main controlling of the stepper motor. In other words, uh, by pushing this button, I get it to move forward, the middle button stops it, and the left button reverses it. And that's how it runs through the bandsaw blade. I have two other buttons here, which are good for like alignment, they're jog buttons. So as long as I hold the button down, I can tweak something in. And this is good when I'm trying to align my uh, bandsaw blade with my wood. <clears throat> what I don't have yet are some limit switches. I need to put two limit switches, one here and one at the other end, to make sure this uh, system doesn't go too far and hit the, hit the stop here. So that needs to be added in the future. And these buttons are really small now. I need to replace this with a bigger box with some larger buttons so it's much easier to control. I'm operating this at uh, 20, 24 volts for the uh, motor. Uh, so this is a NEMA 23, a three, or excuse me, four amp motor. I may end up going to a little bit larger motor in the future. And again, this showed how it mounted to the sled. With a system with a six foot rail, I've been able to slice boards up to 50 inches long. Well, the other thing on this is, I have a potentiometer here which I can control the speed. And one of the studies I'll be doing in the future is cutting boards at different uh, speed rates to compare the finish. I know I've stated over the years that the slower you cut, the smoother you cut. I'll now be able to do a study on that to get some accurate numbers showing the actual speed through the bandsaw blade and uh, see what kind of finishes we get. Also by using this uh, system which is automated, I can run this system much slower than I do manually because you know, normally you're here pushing it through and you don't waste a lot of time doing that, but when it's automated, you can push it and let it take its time going through a board. And once I get the automatic stops on, it'll stop itself when it's done. This is a work in process. This is the first video. I have a lot more to do on this. Not only adding, you know, stops for the system, you know, building a box, a controller for the system. Uh, and after I get it all working, I need to be able to see, you know, what size boards it, it can cut. You know, I'm cutting some small boards now. Well, which is always working fine, but what if I go to a 6 inch or 12 inch wide board? Does the system have enough power to push it through the bandsaw blade? And if not, I have to go to a bigger motor. After I get all that working, the next step is to automate the indexing wheel. So it can automatically index the system. Once I get that done, you can put a board on here 
tell it to cut 10 boards and it'll go through and process 10 boards automatically. So that's the hope for the future, but that's months away. So the first thing I need to do is you know, position my board like I normally do, push the board against the bandsaw blade and then adjust my carriage so it uh, just touches the, or so my board just touches the bandsaw blade. And that's where these jog switches are nice for doing that. Now if it's taking too slow, I can speed it up. And just making sure it's close, make sure it's not binding up. And once I have a touch in the bandsaw blade, then I can adjust my system, push it till it just touches the, the board, lock my mag jigs, bring it back. Again, loosen my mag jig clamps. Again, one revolution for the bandsaw blade. And let's cut a board maybe, uh, say, 15 thousandths of an inch thick. Lock my mag jig clamps. I'll bring this back so I can set my speed. You can see I can get that going real slow. Which I like doing. So once ready, I'll turn the bandsaw blade on and then turn my processor on and let it go through the bandsaw blade. This is the real-time running speed of the board going through the bandsaw blade. So normally when I'm using the automated system, I actually cut slower than I normally cut using my AccuSlide system. And the board's running through the bandsaw blade at a constant even speed. There's no jerking motion. Uh, the bandsaw blade is going through slowly, and as it's going through the board, it, it's acting like a planer and actually smoothing out the surface. So as a result, you get some very, very smooth cuts with this system. And there's our board cut off the uh, system. One thing by having this being automated, uh, there's no jerking motion of the system going through the carriage, it's going through nice and even and smooth. And there's no significant uh, saw marks on there. Like I said, I'll be doing a study later, running this at different speeds to see how, how smooth we can get the uh, piece of wood going through that. Now when it's done, you need to reverse it, of course. And I don't want to reverse it at that same speed because it takes too long, so I can increase the speed on the system and just uh, reverse it. So I'm reversing it at a higher speed. another cut and let me see if I can cut a board as thin as five thousandths of an inch thick. So that's one full revolution for the bandsaw blade and then let's try five thousandths. And I'm going to try maybe even slowing it down a little bit more uh, on the speed. I am speeding up the video of this section just to uh, not waste so much time watching this section of the video but I'm getting I'm cutting at a very slow speed probably around 15 inches per minute and cutting quite slowly so I should get a pretty smooth cut on this probably about a 5,000 inch thick a slice of board and I am slicing a piece of maple so there's our board coming off the system a beautiful surface on that and that measures Four thousandths, four and about four between four and four and a half thousand, four thousandths of an inch. It's actually four thousandths of an inch thick. So 
So this is a work in process. I have a lot more work to do going forward in the future, uh, both hardware and software development. I'll be starting off by adding some uh, limit switches on both ends of the ball screw so I don't uh, take it too far. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to get a display system to show how fast we're cutting boards on the system. And people ask in the past, uh, how fast are you pushing your board through the bandsaw blade? Well, I've actually written a software uh, that shows up on the, on the PC screen to show uh, the speed in uh, inches per minute uh, that the uh, system is moving through the bandsaw blade. But I like to have a little screen that actually shows, you know, on the bandsaw showing how, how, how what the speed is of cutting uh, the boards. So I have a lot more work to do is so creating limit switches, creating some sort of shielding system to keep sawdust off of the uh, ball screw, making a controller box to enclose all this in a, in a nice box, uh, getting some bigger buttons so you can more easily start and stop it. Maybe even having something portable you can move over here and operate it from with a, a, lead, a lead screw, a lead, uh, a lead wire. So I'll be working on all that uh, as time goes on. So this is not a project that will be done in you know, a week or two. This will be months of development on this project. And again, uh, I know I think at least one of our viewers has automated the system already. And I'd like to hear from those people, anybody doing it. Anybody has any suggestions on ways to improve it, to do things better? Uh, I'd be glad to uh, take your input and inc incorporate those in my, uh, my future design. After I get the main system all working, the next thing I want to do is I want to automate the indexing system. And I may use this index system. I may, may make something different. I don't know. See how, how much it works. Uh, my concern is this is a little bit heavier than normal. I'm not sure this, ball, or this uh, indexing system is heavy enough. I may have to make a bigger system. So I'll look at that going going forward. But it'd be nice to you know put a you know two or three inch wide board on here, set the system up, and say I want to cut you know ten or fifteen boards, you know twenty five thousand inch thick, and you push a button and go come back in twenty minutes and it's all done. So that would be the ideal way to to get this done. But uh, we'll see. That's that's quite a ways in the future. So as I'm going forward, I. Uh, like to ask for any input if anybody else has done something similar has any suggestions uh, on how to improve this system how to do things better I'd be happy to hear from you and incorporate some of your ideas in these in the future design whether this becomes a commercial product or just something for our customers to do themselves I don't know um, my concern is cost how much it costs to do it because I said I've already spent two weeks just getting this far and I have many more weeks of development to go on it going forward uh, a lot of the components are coming down in price. This ball screw I was able to buy on Amazon, it was, it was less than $100, which wasn't too bad. The electronics, I probably spent less than $200 on the electronics total. Uh, so my additional investment so far is about five, five, less than $500. But, you know, I spent two weeks working on it too, and I'm, I'm still learning to, to program. I said I've done program, programming many years in the past, using Fortran and BASIC, but now I'm learning the Arduino code for programming uh, the Arduino uh, circuit board. So I'm, I'm still learning uh, new things. So Anyway, I'll keep you informed. There'll be additional videos coming out in the future as I add additional features to the system. Probably one of the next things I want to do, is I'll, I'll, probably in the next few weeks, I'll publish a video on cutting at different speeds. So we can look at what the finish is to verify what is the optimum speed to cut on the bandsaw. If you saw this piece of wood I cut, this is an 8 teeth per inch blade, so it's normally on a cutting board just thin, I use a 10 teeth per inch. But this is an 8 teeth per inch blade, and that's a really good surface. I really can't complain about that surface. I mean, that, because it's moving through that bandsaw blade at a constant speed, no jerking motion, uh, no stopping at all, uh, it's a very, very smooth surface. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any additional questions or concerns or comments, please give us a call or drop us an email. I'd be happy to hear from you.